Well, Klaus has just announced that he's Reich, sehr Reich. Uh, Heidi, now she noticed, she hadn't noticed this before, but he is standing there beside a huge, beautiful motorcycle. It is a BMW S1000RR. I don't really know what that means, but I asked my German friend Shirley, who owned a BMW motorcycle once, and uh, you, what would be a dream motorcycle? There it is, with that special red color and chrome, and uh, you know, and, and then two helmets and a place to put the helmet in the back, and, and he's there, he's standing right beside it. Uh, and then he goes on to say, um, and so, so now he's got her attention. Uh, he says to her, Ich bin nicht dumm. Ich bin nicht dumm. I am not dumb. He's going to prove it. He says, Ich kann sehen. I can. This would be to, to count. Ich kann sehen. I can count. And so here, here's an excuse to show you how to count in German. Uh, eins. Zwei, that, that Z, I don't think I told you that, that Z, uh, an initial Z in German uh, has the, uh, if it's an initial, meaning it starts a word, an initial Z has more or less the sound of T-S, Zwei, and then, and then that, yeah, I told you that. Did I tell you the W's? I think I, yeah, I told you the W's will usually have the sound of a V, sort of. Zwei. So that actually would be like, <laughs> I guess a zwei, I guess that's the way I would spell it in my spelling system. Eins, zwei, drei, vier. Now, I didn't tell you that, I don't think that an initial uh, V, an initial uh, V in German has more or less the sound of our English F. Vier. Vier. Fünf. Now, fünf, that uh, would, would be the umlaut there, and uh, w you probably can't see the two dots. Fünf. Five. Without the umlaut, that would be fünf. It's fünf. And, and that sound right there is a sound that is not made in English. As a matter of fact, I think English speakers aren't even really very comfortable making that sound. It's like e, fünf. Uh, and there's a, maybe I'll erase this if I remember. I'll erase this and show you something about languages in, in, in Europe. E, fünf. It's hard. Sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. So there's one to ten in uh, in German. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben. In Europe they put a thing of acht, neun, zehn. And then he goes on to say eins, eins, und eins is drei. Eins und eins is drei. Is, I'm not sure we have that yet. That's the word is. Is drei. Eins und eins. Eins und eins is drei. And, and she says, was? What? That doesn't make sense. Was? Was? And he explains, du und ich Du und ich, wir, wir, you and I, we, sind drei. We are, we are drei. And he'll count. Du, ich und uns. Du, ich und uns. You see, you can count them. There's you, there's I, and there's us together. And she says, 
Ach so. Uh, it's the ach. Uh, well, I could translate this like this. Ah, so. In German, that sort of means ah, so that's it. Uh, ach, ach so. Oh yeah. Uh, a, a little hard to translate. All right, now I said about that sound right there. Let me. I think. Well, uh, I'll read this one more time, then I'll erase it. Ich bin nicht dumm. And you should say that. Uh, Ich kann Salem. Salem, there's that T-S. Salem. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. Eins und eins ist drei. Was? Du und ich. Wir sind drei. Du, ich und uns. Ach so. All right, now, what, what I was going to show you just real quickly. In, in Europe, oh man, let's see, what's Europe look like? Oh, up here's Denmark, and there's France, and there's Spain. There's Spain, and there's, there's Italy, and whatever. Anyway, there's a line across... Europe, sort of, the languages, that north of that line, that E sound occurs, and it does not occur in French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, English, uh, but in the languages that way it does, that's something that linguists have noticed before. All right, end of this video, I've got at least one more today.